Okay, so you just want it all gone then, you don't. The training ball is the valuable part, yep. Yeah. Is that in there? And then for the piece that made my jaw drop, I could not believe my eyes. Bloggy Fritz. It's pretty early in the morning. I got an hour drive ahead of me. I got a message from a lady asking if I'd like to take a look at and possibly buy her Star Wars collection. Of course, the answer to that is a big fat yes. I will always look at a Star Wars collection. She did send me a few pictures. Uh, it looks like there's quite a bit of modern stuff, which which isn't really my thing, but I can I can move all that in my little vendor booth. But I did see a few vintage pieces peeking out in the pictures, so I'm excited to go check it out. She said the stuff's been stored away in toads for years now, just kind of taking up space at this point. But from what I could see, it, it looks like she's she's bought some here and there probably probably since the 70s when the stuff first started being made. So I'm gonna go take a look at this. Hopefully there's some cool stuff. Hopefully there's a deal to be made. If there is, obviously when we get back, I'll I'll uh, take you through as much as I can. There is one thing worth mentioning. She said it's fine to record. She just doesn't personally want to be on video. So I will do my best to just keep my back turned to her. Just thought I should probably warn you about that first. If she does make it into the video, then I'll just I'll just blur it out or something. But I'll do the best I can. Just Just give me that one little concession. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Wow. Some good stuff there. Thanks. Honestly, I'm just looking to one get rid of it. Two, I need some money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't, right? Right. Um, and so yeah, I'm just. Okay, so you just want it all gone, then you don't like. You'd rather not pick through it and... Well, no, if you want to pick through it and I'll just... I mean... I mean, I'm fine with that. Could yeah, you... I mean, yeah, of course, take... I mean, I don't want you to have to, like, take it if you don't want to play. <laughs> oh, no, I... I... Just, yeah, I mean, I left two of them separate if you... Or empty if you wanted to... Okay. ...do that. I mean, take your time. I've got nowhere to be. Um, these are... Um, the special edition movie posters and then one from Dark Horse. Okay. And then this is the comics from Dark Horse in one big book. Oh, wow. Um, there's empty puzzle boxes. The puzzles were made. Oh, okay. Right here. And here's some other posters. Um, I don't know if you're, I don't know if you do comics or anything, but I've got. I do like comics, yeah. The Marvel. Um, I, I don't know if I have everything, but I've got Marvel. I've got. Um, the Star Log and uh, Insiders oh, okay. and stuff like that. Wow. Um, and then I think some newer ones too. Okay. Um, this is, I kind of tried to keep the original. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it's separated separate. pretty good. I mean, obviously the box may chew to snap. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> it still exists, though, so that's cool. Yeah, and then a lot of these are like the newer ones that right. are still in the package. Okay. Um, obviously, cool. I had a Luke Skywalker fetish, so that's <laughs> You know, but yeah, I mean, feel free to okay. rummage or... Sounds good. You know, I mean, obviously asking for a fair price, but I know, you know. Uh, do you have a price in mind at all? <laughs> you know, because I really haven't had the chance to really yeah. do the research. And I wouldn't even know how, because, like, if you look on eBay, it's like what they're asking is not maybe what it's... Oh, right, and then... Worse, so I don't... And then there's the time involved in everything too yeah, that yeah. it might sit there for a right. year and so you know right now i take care of my elderly dad and that's why we're kind of doing it out in the garage so he can sleep but sure um, sure but yeah basically i just need the room okay um, and then i guess this i don't have the c3po one but i do have a vader head okay um there are some figures oh, are there? in there so yeah, I mean, I can grab a table if you wanted to. You know. I mean, I won't pull everything out. I'll just kind of see. Okay, you know. okay. Yeah, take your time. I want to be easy for you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah. There's some stuff in there. Okay. And, I mean, I had fun with this stuff at one point. Because, yeah. You know, I love collecting, but you get to a certain age where it's like, okay. Oh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> if somebody else can enjoy this, by all means. A lot of this stuff is just all about temporary enjoyment, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like I said, there's, I think, yeah. And then there's um, some of the graphic novels. Okay. I think the newer stuff, and so I think. Okay, so this is older back here. I think those are the older ones, but again, I don't, 
I have quite a bit, but I don't think I have every single right. issue. Um, yeah, so. Okay. And it was funny because I was asking at work, and like, does anybody know where <laughs> I can get, you know, a decent, you know? Right. And somebody's like, well, have you ever seen uh, froggy flips? I'm uh -huh. like, what? <laughs> so I just watched some videos, and then I guess the guy at work who gave me your name, uh -huh. one of his friends had sold you some stuff. Oh, really? And so he's like, oh, I would recommend this guy. So, well, that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm glad so the word of. Good reputation. <laughs> I'm glad it's spreading a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. If it's just sitting in bins in a room. Oh yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not bringing For sure. Kind of that feng shui thing they say. <laughs> right. So yeah, the last thing I want to do is throw it and give it away. If somebody wants it. Oh no no yeah. There's always yeah. there's always going to be a market for Star Wars. Yeah, okay. And I was yeah I wasn't even sure about like videotapes if VHS is any. If you're going to have them, these are the ones to have because they're the red label. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. New, these go for like a thousand a piece. I mean, like, you know, use like 20 or something. Yeah, but like, wow, so it's, it's pretty so crazy, crazy, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Which I'm sure that market will crash soon. Oh, no. I mean, you know, people aren't going to spend thousand dollars for VHS forever. missile right still in the box is worth a gajillion oh yeah because that was a prototype it never yeah. and yeah never actually hit the market so only a, a few lucky people have one of those wow. things yeah i'm not one of them no, obviously no. <laughs> probably never will be and i heard the millennium falcon if it still has the um the training ball because that training ball, the training ball is the valuable part yep yeah because it always like fell off mm -hmm. missing so is that in there no no <laughs> i'll be honest it, no. don't have the training ball I, and then the, the Jawas in the original packaging. Mm -hmm. Some people would cut Obi-Wan's coat and put it right. on, but that's hard to say. Now it has to be in the original <laughs> packaging. Yeah, there's like, lots of nuances with it. Like the 12 cards or something. Right. The original 12 cards. Mm -hmm. But I think just having the boxes is cool too, even if they're not complete in there. Cool. Okay. That's what I was kind of hoping that, you know. I mean, people collect boxes. I mean. Cool. Okay. Those are all star logs, comics, yeah. posters, and yeah. puzzles. And There's a bunch of the modern Charles stuff. Still has um, his Huku machine or mm -hmm. and Salacious Crumb. Oh, okay. So yeah. I actually recently bought a bunch of extras of those two parts. Oh okay. Oh all right. Sealed in the plastics, but oh, okay. it's cool to have the original ones, obviously. That's why I was like, oh, I don't think I have. And I opened <laughs> up the trap door. I'm like, yes. That is cool. They're still there, so. I just want to list the a good home and somebody's gonna yeah i mean like enjoy it or, yeah, so. basically what i do is like most of the modern stuff you know like the stuff from like the 90s on yeah. i'll price at a decent price and put it in my actual like vendor booth thing okay and then and then i really take my time like with the vintage stuff so that's okay. how i treat buys like this and i know some of the collectibles i got some plates those hamilton's mm -hmm. collectible plates and then I've got Wing Commander video games, or for um, computers, but I never oh, okay. played those, and then just made a binder at school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a geek. <laughs> That's a lot of cool stuff, though. So, I just think it's time to hurt with it, make room for my dad and his stuff. Sure. So, All right, well, let me shoot out an offer. 
just based on what I see, based on the time I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna take. And then you just tell me what you think. How close would 800 be? It's kind of cheap for a thousand. Thousand dollars. Deal. Yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. Oh I think it's worth it. Awesome, okay. Awesome. This should be a thousand. Double count that, I'm, I'm gonna make some room. Yeah, do you, if you and wanna then, turn it, turn it around. Okay, whatever. awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so we made it back to the showroom. I spent about nine straight hours going through every single piece from this collection. I tried to get everything separated into a few different categories. There was a small bit that was destined for the donate pile. There's quite a bit of like bulk shelf filler. And then there was definitely a few nicer vintage pieces, which is, which is what I was personally after. So when I buy an unsorted collection like this, I'm really hoping four different things happen. First, I'm just hoping it's a lot of fun to go through and separate and organize and all that. First and foremost. Number two, I'm hoping it's a worthwhile investment after I put in all the appropriate time and work and everything. Number three, when it comes to a line like Star Wars, I'm hoping I find at least a piece or two for my personal collection because in the world of collectibles, there are very few things that I enjoy more than 77 through 85 Star Wars. And number four, I'm hoping the dig unveils at least a piece or two that just kind of has that unexpected wow factor. And I'm happy to report that I think I'm going to be able to check off all four boxes on that checklist. So real quick, let's take a look at some of this stuff. All right, so I have most of the bulk laid out here in the storage and sorting room. And this may look impressive, seeing all this stuff in packages. But honestly, most of the stuff here is just going to be like the more modern shelf filler. And when I say modern, I mean stuff from like the mid-90s till now. There's a few vintage pieces in here like the glasses. But so much of this stuff is just kind of low dollar, slow selling stuff. It's cool to look at. It looks really good in a booth like I have. And it'll do just fine over time. It's just nothing too high end. We're looking at like 5 to 20 bucks for probably 90% of this stuff. A few exceptions might be like this complete set of Empire Strikes Back Burger King glasses. Having all four like this, I mean, that can be 50 to 100 bucks. These comic packs can actually be pretty decent. There's a couple of those. But all these carded figures and stuff definitely fit in that range. There were all these loose modern figures that I don't personally do much with. I usually just bag them up into one lot. But then there were some nicer vintage figures, uh, mostly incomplete. Like we have a pretty decent Jedi Luke with his cloak, but he's missing his two accessories. We have the trench coat Han missing his gun, a combat poncho Leia with the poncho and the helmet, but missing the belt and the gun. Some first 12 stuff like Chewie with no bow caster. There's an Obi-Wan Kenobi with no lightsaber. This one's actually pretty cool. This is the removable limbs C-3PO, which I actually did not have yet. It comes with the backpack still sealed right there. I'm sure most of you know, but it's called the removable limbs C-3PO because its limbs come off and you can put the backpack on Chewie's back and he can walk around with all the pieces of C-3PO. Pretty cool little figure. We have an Atari cartridge, Star Wars the arcade game. Even cartridge only, this can be like 40 or 50 bucks, so that one's pretty decent. We have the good VHS with the red triangles. They are open, of course, but it's nice having the entire trilogy like that. This is pretty neat. It's a master replica 0.45 scale Luke Skywalker lightsaber. It doesn't look like it's ever been opened, but I think that might actually have some pretty decent value. Otherwise, most of this stuff, I just need to get it all priced up and dropped off. That's why it's all spread out like this. And then over here, we have what from a kind of slow burn bulk investment recouping standpoint might be one of the better parts of the deal. All these comics, all these magazines. It's really cool that they're all boarded and bagged already because that actually takes a lot of time. So that's super helpful. Condition varies on all this stuff. We have some stuff in pretty decent condition, some stuff in not so great condition. Out of everything here, I think probably the biggest key is this one. Star Wars number 107, the very last issue in the original Marvel run of Star Wars. It's actually in pretty nice condition. Not a super valuable book, but it is considered one of the bigger keys in the whole series. It was definitely cool to see that one in there. Star Wars number two is considered a major key. However, this is a reprint, so, so that hurts the value quite a bit. A lot of minor stuff like number three and four and five. There's quite a bit in here, nowhere near a full run, but a lot of the original stuff and then past that, you get into some of the droids and Ewoks and Return of the Jedi comics. 
There's the Ewoks. And then you come to some of the newer stuff like the Dark Horse Classic Star Wars, Classic Star Wars Return of the Jedi, Classic Star Wars The Early Adventures. A lot of this will just be priced at $1, $2, $5, maybe up to $10 for some of it. And over time that'll add up because there's quite a few. And then the magazines are pretty cool as well. Pretty much anything that you can imagine that involves Star Wars over the years in some way or another. Some pretty neat stuff. Also all bagged and boarded. Kind of the same thing here. A lot of this stuff won't be worth very much at all, but it does look cool on a magazine rack and it is going to catch someone's attention. So like I said, this is probably one of the better parts of the deal. It'll just take a while, which I'm completely fine with. And then back here in the showroom, we have what I think are the nicer vintage pieces that have a little bit more potential. First of all, the Millennium Falcon, Return of the Jedi with the box. So the negatives on this piece, there is no Jedi training ball which is actually probably the most expensive piece on this, unfortunately. It does have the arm, it's missing the ball. And it's also missing the instruction manual. The positives, it is very, very clean, and that box is pretty darn nice. It's got a little bit of tape on it, but overall, that is a nice box for a Millennium Falcon. As you can see, some of the stickers have kind of fallen off over the years. The good news is they were all still in there and all still intact. They could probably be reapplied. But then the last downside is the fact that the battery compartment is pretty corroded. I'll probably try to fix it. And if I am successful, I do have a legit Jedi training ball that I can, that I can use for this piece because I'm the guy that likes to complete everything. It just has to be worth it. So as long as that battery compartment can come clean, I feel good about using this Jedi training ball and making this a nice complete piece. And then we have the Rebel Transport from The Empire Strikes Back, also with a pretty nice box. The same tape stuff on it. Overall though, a very nice box. This one is pretty complete as well. As you can see there, there's the main parts that usually go missing. This one is missing the battle gear, which is, which is not too expensive to replace. This one is also very clean, no yellowing. The stickers look good on this. So this will probably be worth buying the survival gear. Here's just a straight up nice piece. It's the vintage Rancor Monster, nice paint. Nothing's broken. Nice working jaw, as you can see there. This is one of those pieces I did not have one in my collection, and now I do. Otherwise, it'd be about probably a $100 piece or so. And then we have the Jabba the Hutt play set. This one, it did have salacious crumb. However, the hookah pipe was broken and it was missing the bottom bowl. Luckily, a while back, I did find a guy that was selling a big supply of these new old stock, actual Kenner pieces of the bagged salacious crumbs and the bagged hookah pipe bottom bowl and slave collar. I got a few of these, so if I do find Jabba the Hutt play sets that are missing those pieces, it's no big deal because I have several new old stock legit pieces to actually complete these, which is what I did here. So now we have a nice complete play set. It does have a box. The box is pretty much trashed on this one but everything else is very nice. Probably valued somewhere in the $100 to $150 range. And then lastly, I did promise a couple unexpected wow factor pieces. Here is the first one. This is Star Wars number 42, the first appearance of Boba Fett. Probably one of the biggest keys in all of Star Wars, aside from number one. When I was going through the comics, I was super happy to find this one. It's even a newsstand copy in very nice shape, although it does have some weird little stamp up there. With that little stamp, if I had to guess, I would probably value this somewhere close to a hundred bucks, maybe, maybe a little bit more just because everything else is so nice. Complete guess though. And then for the piece that made my jaw drop when I was going through the action figures, I could not believe my eyes. What we have here is the pop-up R2-D2. One of the elusive Last 17 figures. Pretty nice label. It does have a little crinkling. Other than that, the coloring is not too bad. The lightsaber is intact and in there. This little green piece of plastic is shockingly hard to come by. Now, it'd be silly to say that there's much from the original Star Wars line that would be considered rare. Obviously, there's a few pieces that are, but everything else, they made millions and millions and millions of them. However, there are figures that command quite a bit of value, and this is one of them. I did need this for my collection. If I was just going to buy one, I'd be lucky to spend less than $500 on just this piece alone. So finding it in a huge lot like this was exactly what I needed to do. It honestly made the entire buy worth it for me. That is all I got for you this time. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching the video. But until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. Love ya. Bye.